Do you want to diversify your investments? Then visit squaredfinancial.com and explore great opportunities. Hello, family. Yes, I got this and I love this. My name is Joseph Kim from Nigeria and I want to share with you how helpful this podcast has been to me. That was the year 2020 during the pandemic when I discovered the VT podcast, Ideas That Matter. And then my environment was a bad one for my growth, my goals and my dreams. So I was, I was, I was finding it difficult to focus and to live my dreams. When I saw this podcast, I held on to it and it has been a compass, it has been a mirror, it has been a map and a thought line for me. It has been my environment. And so far, I've been able to focus on my dreams and live my life. So I want to say thank you very much, VT. Thank you very much, Vosite Mekwayo, for the work you do. Thank you very much. This now is part of my morning routine. I play it every single morning to elevate my thoughts and elevate my habits. So thank you. I appreciate it. Hello, family. (laughs) We're back. Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast. And here, we talk about ideas that matter. That phenomenal gentleman joins us from Nigeria, one of my favorite countries in the world. Uh, One of my best friends actually comes from Nigeria, now lives in the U.S. Uh, He's a friend, an advisor, and I think of him in very high regard. Uh, if you've never traveled to Nigeria, I can't recommend it enough. Listen, I'm not saying you're going to make it back, but I am saying you need to go. <laughs> you know, one of the things I love about Nigeria, I'll never forget the first time I traveled into Nigeria, I uh, landed at Motala Airport. And um, so I landed at the airport and I had somebody at VIP to come and meet me in the plane. The person comes to meet me in the at VIP in the plane. Takes me off the plane, kind of out through customs, et cetera, et cetera. Then you go and you collect your bag. And as you collect your bag, there's those security guys that stand there, right? And they like, che- they want to check that your boarding pass and the tag on your bag match. In other words, that you're not, you haven't skimmed somebody else's wares, as it were. So anyway, I've got this bag and I'm walking out and the guy comes to stop me. And my person at VIP is like, yeah, yeah, yeah he's okay. And we walk outside the airport. Uh, it's my first time in Nigeria. I'm going back now. If we're in 2022. This must have been 2014, maybe 2015, I want to say. And as we walk outside of the airport, there's an entire entourage of cars waiting for me. And there's like four guys armed with what looked like R4 rifles, dressed in full paramilitary regalia. And I'm looking at this going, guys, uh, the aim was not to draw attention to ourselves. You have now taken a pencil and you have drawn the wed attention so anyway so these guys are like standing there i would like these r4 rifles and my vips escorting me and they open the door and i get into the car quite presidential of me if i am honest but just before these cadillacs pulled off you know without like whoop whoop and the and the lights flashing i turn i'm sitting in the car and and the windows to my left and i turn to my left and i look at the airport true story There's a massive sign, kind of like a billboard, right above the glass that you walk through to get into the airport, that glass that operates as like the doors. Right above it, massive sign, written, no standing, no loitering, and no waiting. And underneath that, what must have been 300 people standing, loitering, and waiting. So I turned to the lady who's my VIP and I said to her, but there's a sign there that says you can't do this. She says, nah, yeah, now worry. In Nigeria, the law is not the law. It's more like a recommendation. (laughs) All right, let's try that again. Hello, family. (laughs) Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast. And here we talk about ideas that matter. Today, I want to talk to you about Kronos and Kairos. Kronos and Kairos. You might know them as time. I want to talk to you today a bit about time. You see, the former, yeah, Kronos, that is, 
refers literally to the numeric or the chronological time. It's the sequencing of time as you and I understand it. It's the substantive form of time, the quantitative nature of time. It's the past, the present, and the future. It's this moment preceding the next. And this moment is the next that I was talking about. That kind of sequential nature of time is what we call chronos. Kairos, however, refers to the right or opportune moment. So whereas then chronos might be time, kairos is timing. Do you see it? Why do I want to talk to you about these today? Well, because I think we're living in a time where it's important for you and I not only to understand the time we're living in, but to understand timing ourselves in the time that we're living in. And this goes back, really. It's really, really important, I think, to begin to understand at a sequential level, when we talk about this thing called time, what does that mean? Wikipedia says that time is the continued sequence of existence and events that occurs in an apparently irreversible succession from the past through the present into the future. It is a component quantity of various measurements used to sequence events to compare the duration of events or the intervals between them. So there's three fundamental points there. That it is, first, sequence, second, event-based, and third, irreversible. Very important to make the point here that this, by the way, is not a universally held principle. It certainly isn't a principle that is without time itself. This principle is a time-bound principle, because if you arc your mind back and cast your mind all the way back, way back, back in the eons of time, when different generations and different civilizations were dealing with the concept of time. You see, according to the Incan, the Mayan, and the Hopi, as well as other Native American tribes, add to that list the Babylonians, the ancient Greeks, Hinduism, Buddhism, both, and several other uh, cultures and religions. They believed in the wheel of time. So they didn't regard time as linear. They regarded time as cyclical and quantic. In other words, it consisted of repeating ages that happen to every being in the universe between birth and before extinction. Why is this important? Well, it's important for several reasons. There are some of you listening to this conversation who are followers of this podcast who believe that an opportunity has passed you to never come back again. You were given an opportunity. You were included in a conversation. You were invited into the room. You had something you could have done at a certain point in time. And you either weren't wise to the opportunity, didn't recognize the scale of that opportunity, or just wasn't mature enough to understand how big that was. And so, you let the opportunity slip right through your fingers. To you, I say, time is not linear. Time is circular. See, what you have to learn is you have to learn how to identify when your circle of opportunities is again. You have to understand how the universe functions and works and how seasons functions and works. A very dear friend of mine, Amelia, gorgeous, gorgeous Amelia. She's a professional dancer living in Dubai. She has this theory that she talks about, and she's one of these people who's into, like, the stars, and she'll tell me that Aries is in Taurus visiting Pisces having lunch with, I don't know, Aquarius. And I'm like, what the hell did you just say? But what it basically comes down to is using different reference points to understand seasons, seasoning, time, and timing. And different generations, different iterations different cultures and different religions read all of these differently. 
What seems to hold true, though, is that time flows in a sequenced wheel. Here's how I know this to be true. I hate winter in South Africa. I hate it. Like, I don't enjoy the winters in South Africa. I hate that, like, golden brown look that the grass gets where it's neither dead nor alive. It's just like surviving beneath that morning dew that sits and rested as a flatbed, really, of ice, isn't it? Until around an hour just before midday. I don't like it. I hate fallen leaves and broken twigs off major trees on my walkway or my driveway as I enter my home. I don't like it. I started thinking about why don't I like it. Then I realized that at almost every single material time in my adult life where I have suffered some sort of loss, whether it was the loss of an opportunity, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a business, the loss of income, the loss of a loved one, it tended to be around that time. It might not be true for you. In fact, I'm almost sure it's not. But for me, that's what it feels like. So my brain then, seeing the golden brown, sends a message neurologically to my body that prepare yourself, we're in the season of loss. Yeah? Whereas, when I see the summers, the spring, the greening of the fields, when I walk out into my mega garden that goes up into this traverse of a mountain, and in between my garden and the mountain at the back is this beautiful stream river that runs, when I see that and it's green, and lush, at almost every single time in my life when there's been a major win, it's tended to be around that time. So, what I've learned is I get the timing of that time right. Now, knowing what I know, it doesn't mean it's true. It just means it's how I've assimilated that information. So, the work I've been doing with myself has been around reconditioning my condition as it pertains to how I read seasons at a point in time in my life. Would you believe it? This year, this winter, has been amazing, phenomenal wins. We got our licensing in South Africa as a financial services provider. Amazing. I shouldn't make that announcement yet. The team asked me not to, but let me slip it in there because when the time is right, the team will announce and a whole host of other things. But in addition to that, we opened up our major office in the UAE, are in the process of getting that licensing, partnered with several other partners across continent, got that licensing. And on the third stage of raising our VUCA fund and that licensing, but in addition to this, Club 100 surpassed that amazing, phenomenal mark of the number of members we wanted. All in the season of what I always thought was my season of loss. So the question for you then, what are the truths that you have told yourself about this time in your life? What are the truths that you have told yourself about the timing of things in your life? And how do you recondition yourself to recognize that that isn't ordinarily true? You know, the Islamic and Judeo-Christian view regards time as linear and directional, beginning with the act of the creation by God. The traditional Christian view sees time ending. The word they use there is teleologically with you know, the end of the things that are present today, the end of time. And the point about this is time can only end if it began. It can only cease to be if there was a time it never was. 
I want to venture to say here that we have to separate how human beings see time with how the universe sees time. The universe didn't invent seconds, minutes, or hours. For those of us who are Christian, I don't believe there is a book where God says to any of the disciples or prophets at quarter past eleven on Wednesday, at 33 minutes, 33 seconds past quarter past eleven, I'm going to send you a sign. Because even those of us who are believers know that the Creator works with timing rather than just the singular instance of time. So the question for you again, how do you begin to decouple your relationship with time with your relationship with timing? And for those of you who have a negative affliction with a certain point of time in your life, how do you rewrite that story so that you don't reintroduce past traumas into new opportunities? Because that's really what it is you're doing, isn't it? You're reintroducing past traumas into new spaces. It's quite Newtonian, this uh, singular kind of linear look at time. I mean, it was not Isaac Newton, right, who subscribed to the realist view, as it was later known. And, since, and that's why sometimes we talk about time as Newtonian time, right? This idea, time starts at a point, ends at another, and it's independent of events in a particular dimension as the events occur in a particular sequence. So perhaps then, as we are experiencing the world, is not necessarily perhaps how the world is configured. I could go so much further and talk a bit about space-time. Man, that's an entirely different conversation. The physical nature of time, you know, as it's addressed to this theory of general relativity. And it is argued that as we get closer to black holes, time itself isn't just time. The single moment, the unit, the second is either elongated or shortened depending on where we are in proximity to the black hole. So time itself is not linear. The reason I wanted to share this with you is because I think of the following. I think we've come out of an interesting time, a time where most of us have had very deep challenges, either in your personal life, for your business life, or a whole host of other areas. Some of you are in recovery, others have completely recovered. And as you're living out these experiences, you're often reliving the affliction and the pain, taking past traumas into future blessings. And the reason we do that is because there's certain things we identify, isn't it, as universal. If you've experienced something at a particular sequence, if I've experienced trauma during winter, if somebody has experienced blessings during summer, if I've experienced trauma when I visit a particular place, and every time I'm there, my body immediately readies itself to experience the trauma again. I want to tell you the following. First, I want to tell you that in this sequenced wheel of time, this moment will come again. So if you miss it, learn from it. It's so important. When I was 17 years old, I won the World Championship in Public Speaking 2002. I could have taken a very different direction with my life, and the truth is, I would be much, much further, much further. But I didn't take that direction. I wasn't smart enough to understand this incredible opportunity I had. I could have been a global public speaker by the time I was 23. But I didn't. Because my conditioning was that I needed to get a job and build a career and earn an income and get a payslip. Do you understand? Even though God had given me this amazing world-class talent with this phenomenal exposure, I spoke with the Australian Houses of Parliament when I was 17 years old and got a standing ovation. I went to the British House of Commons. Like At that level already, at, 22, at 17 years old in 2002, when my peers were still at school writing up their matric papers, or at the very least multiple choice to get into matric, I was already networking at a global level. But I wasn't wise enough to the opportunity. I didn't see it. What I promised myself was that I would not make that mistake again. And let me tell you, 
when that opportunity came back, with both hands, both hands, like a construction worker catching a bag of cement, I caught it and I ran with it. Because once you understand sequence, you understand timing. And what I could see coming yonder in the horizon was the build-up to the opportunity again, because opportunities work and flow. They have a sequence. Opportunities work and flow, and they have a sequence. That means that there is a particular flow and a sequence of things that I need to see. And once I understand the flow and understand the momentum and I see the sequencing, then naturally what happens is I know the opportunity is about to present itself. And there, right there, that's when I struggle. That's when I strike. That's when you strike. Get your timing right. This is so important, I don't want you to miss it. Wherever you are, whatever you are chastising yourself for, that missed opportunity, just make another one. Work hard, put your head down, build momentum. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you breaking news. <laughs> Hello, family. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the VT Podcast. I wanted to bring you some breaking news. Club 100 is growing like you cannot believe. Visit vtclub100.com. And if you go there right now, my team will offer you 90% of the first month subscription. You heard right. 90% of the first month subscription. We've just taken on a new cohort. I just got off a one-on-one -on -one call now with one of the members of the new cohort, all the way from Columbus, Ohio, United States. It's amazing the community we've built around the VT Club 100. And if you're not on it and you enjoy this podcast, you are definitely only doing half the work. You're missing out. So go to vtclub100.com, sign up for your membership, get 90% of the first 30 days, experience it for what it is, but most importantly, Learn, love, live. Before I go, if you're wondering how do I build up to an opportunity again, there are three things you need to do. So these are your three things, your homework. First, build momentum. What does that mean? It means start something small and work on it daily and consistently work on it, building up the momentum to make it something large and something big. We had the opportunity to do something amazing with my growth fund. I want to say probably five, maybe six years ago. I wasn't smart enough to the time, didn't understand the opportunity. I let it slip through my fingers. Today, as we speak, we're doing it. But it's taken five years of working every day rebuilding momentum and getting up to that space again where there's the opportunity. So the first, build momentum. The second, have a clarity of focus. It has to be at a single thing. You confuse the universe when you want too many things. Want one. Now what's crazy, and I've said this to you guys before, is every time you want one thing, the universe is going to throw 50 more at you just to make sure that the one you want is actually the one you want. Want one. And focus on it. Because if you want the one thing and you focus on it, and you build momentum around it, then you do the third thing. And the third thing is this. You need to cast aside any doubt. Stop doubting you. That goal that you have, that dream that you have, that house that you want, that car you want to drive, that massive building you want to be the landlord of, all of that. You have those dreams because that's the universe whispering to you what you are actually capable of. So stop doubting you. Do you know why you have resistance? Do you know why you have people who criticize you? Do you know why you have haters? It's because everybody but you knows what you are capable of. Let me say that again. Everybody but you knows what you are capable of. See, they're talking about you behind your back. 
hating on you because they know what you're capable of. They're well aware. Oh, trust me. They're well aware. Whereas Bane said to Batman, Ah, you think darkness is your ally. <laughs> you merely adopted the dark. <laughs> I was born in it. <laughs> I tell you, some of these haters are born in the dark, man. It's like, it's it's unbelievable. Oh, wait, wait. I've been practicing this one, but I think I did it for you guys last time. Remember the, the Liam Neeson one? I've been practicing it. So I've now got it on my phone as my voicemail. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I do not have any money. What I do have, a very particular set of skills. Skills that I've mastered over a long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not find you. But if you don't let her go, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. <laughs> uh... They're hating on you because they know who you are. They know what you're capable of. That's why they talk about you. Yeah. They wouldn't be having a conversation about something not worth conversationing over. They could talk about current affairs. But you're so talented and so gifted that currently you are the affairs they're talking about. Own it. Don't doubt yourself. The resistance you face is equal in measure to the talent that you have. So own it. That, my friend, is our podcast for this week. Kronos and Kairos. Time and timing. From me, Vosit Timberguay, and the rest of the team at the VT Podcast. Sayonara. Relax, trade, and take it easy. Visit squaredfinancial.com and unfold a world of opportunities. Hello, family. The VT Masterclass has now reached over 5 million unique entrepreneurs all across the world. If you'd like to book me for one, make sure that you hit the link below. Cheers.